place was called Superla Spa. It was a full-service establishment. Massage tables, salon chairs, mud baths, etc. The explosion went off a little after three. A squad car was two blocks away when the place went up, so the fire department was able to respond within four minutes. Not that it helped. The place was fully engulfed by the time they arrived. They were just lucky to keep it contained in just this building. I didn't know there was a spa down here. The building's been here since the late 70s, but it's only been a spa since 98. The gentleman in the corner there is Pete Baja. His company owns the Pearl Spa. I took a statement, but you'll want to follow up with me, too. Have you two met yet? Not officially. I'm Sarah Seidel. The team speaks very highly of you. You want to take that interview? Take samples of soot from all around this place to see if we can find traces of an accelerant. One mud bath contains a lot more mud than the others. It might just be the way they do it. But the one next to it is filled only up to the line on the side of the tub. That mud is baked solid. We're going to need a way to examine it inside and out without actually breaking it up and compromising potential evidence. You know, the other day, Catherine was telling me that we have access to an industrial ultrasound device. It sounds perfect for this problem. I'll give her a call. Look at how it's burned away from its frame. Drywall is usually fire resistant. Those holes could be there to let more air fan the fire and get to that wooden frame underneath. That could indicate arson, but we'll need a lot more evidence to prove it. If this thing was on last night, we could have our ignition source. It's hard to tell what this was. Not much left of it. Judging from the charring in the inside of the oven, it was in there for long enough to catch fire. It's almost like a timed fuse. So far, that's two things that point to arson. We'll need more evidence to be sure. style ceiling. Hold your breath while you're taking that sample. If it's as old as it looks, it's probably got asbestos in it. I think if we can get one more sample of soot after this one, we'll have enough. soot from all over this place. Should be enough. Look at the crimping along the edges of the split gas line. I'd say it was cut. That's the third sign of possible arson we found. I'm almost convinced. You can reach me at my office. Now we're living in the future. I'm still waiting for my flying car, but seeing through walls isn't too shabby. I have a rough idea, but remind me again how the device works. Just turn it on and point the wand at whatever you want to scan. 
The sound waves it emits penetrate at different speeds depending on the density of the material. And the onboard computer translates that into a picture, is that right? You got it. I don't think I need to tell you to be careful with it, but be careful with it. Does that look like a human body to you? It looks like we have a victim after all. I'll call Doc Robbins for a pickup. Cleaning her off is just the first step. This is going to take a while. I'll give you a call when I have something for you. I don't think we're going to pull any prints off of that. It was nice of Mr. Baja to give us his fingerprint like that. It's mostly carbon, but there are traces of volcanic minerals and acetone. The mud at the spa is made of volcanic ash, but the acetone is an anomaly. Acetone is sometimes used as an accelerant. We should test the rest of the soot we've collected. Soot from the break room contains carbon, acetone, and T-butyl mercaptan. That's the odorant they use in natural gas. That's the second sample of soot to contain acetone. Let's keep analyzing the soot samples we've collected. I think we're onto something. Lots of carbon, some acetone, and trace amounts of T-butyl mercaptan. We have acetone, a known accelerant, in samples of soot taken from every room in the spa. We've got a gas leak that looks to be the result of tampering. The drywall here has been ventilated to get around its natural fireproofing. And then there's this acetone residue over every inch of the place. Throw a muffin in the toaster oven at 450 degrees. Then just leave it in there without setting the timer. Sounds like a recipe for arson. Hey there, it's Dr. Robbins. I just wanted to let you know I've completed the autopsy on your burn victim. There's quite a bit of carbon from where it burned, but there's also wheat flour, tapioca starch, and sodium carboxymethyl cellulose. What I'm not seeing are any animal proteins. You know what? I think this is a vegan pastry of some kind. A muffin from the size of it. It's primarily calcium sulfate and asbestos. That explains why the ceiling didn't burn.
poisoning. In a fire that intense, carbon monoxide levels would spike rapidly. She probably fell unconscious pretty quick. Most likely, she slipped under the mud after losing consciousness. Nice composition. Looks like Mr. Baja isn't here. Well, we could always knock. No answer. Our victim is not an aphis. She's not in CODIS. Our Jane Doe doesn't seem to be in the system. Maybe Pete Baja knows her. You have enough evidence? Not really. Then the best thing you can do is to get him to volunteer to come in. Las Vegas Crime Lab, drop the weapon now! I grabbed the, the, the tool for protection on the way inside. It was just inside the door. I wasn't there for more... We have to document and collect that shoe impression without destroying it. A photograph should be enough. We need to find a shoe that matches this impression. It's made out of some kind of dirt. We should get a sample. If we can link the shoe impression to someone, then this dirt might tell us where he's been. Some of the 
marks here are thin and straight, but some are circular, just like the holes in the drywall at the spa. This isn't just a hammer. It looks like something off a fire truck. Hey, I read a background on Brian Reed. Turns out that up until last week, he was a captain with the Las Vegas Fire Department. His battalion chief told me Reed had a mixed service record, multiple commendations for bravery, but the guy was also on probation for insubordination. Well, when Reed failed a random drug test last week for the use of cannabis, they fired him. This reminds me. The notorious serial arsonist John Leonard Orr was both a fire captain and an arson investigator. Storing something in the broiler pan. Guess it's a little late to warn Portia about the fire hazard. Dates and dollar amounts. It looks like a record of the spa's finances. A black hair pulled out of the root. Portia was a blonde, and Brian Reed has red hair. Someone else was here. head matches the thin flashes and the hammer side matches the bigger holes. This tool, or one very similar to it, was used to ventilate the drywall at the spa. Brian Reed's Denver tool is a match to the markings on Portia Weissman's door. largely made up of feldspar, clinopyroxene, and acetone. The minerals are found in volcanic ash, which is what they used to make the mud for the baths. And acetone was the accelerant used at the spa. That should contain a workable sample of his DNA. Pete Baja's DNA, ready for processing. Thank you. 
Baja was in Portia Weissman's apartment, even though he told us he'd never been there. How's the arson case? Is your decorated fireman still the prime suspect? I'm not so sure now. He's got an answer for everything. And what I thought was the best evidence we had against him, his firefighting tool, well, it doesn't actually provide us with anything conclusive. On top of that, the spa's owner, Pete Baja, lied to us about never visiting the victim's apartment. All right. Well, talk to Brass. See if he can help you take a closer look at this, Mr. Baja. Based on what evidence? I was there when Baja said he'd never been in Portia Weitzman's apartment. His DNA in that apartment will get you your warrant. Mr. Baja, Las Vegas Police, open up. Looks like he's not here. Guess we'll have to execute the warrant without him. Score one for the lockpick gun. Always cleaner than breaking out the battery ram. It looks like an empty financial or legal portfolio. With the spa's logo on it, those records we found in the Vic's oven are just the kind you'd keep in a binder like this. I expect that to be Pete Baja's fingerprint, since we found the ledger in his office. Blueberry muffins. They look almost edible and flammable. Hold on. Remember, we're looking for evidence which relates to the arson and homicide at the spa, as well as the break in at the victim's apartment. I'm not sure how a hard drive is relevant. Tax forms claim that Superla Spa was highly profitable. You can tell a lot about a person from the kind of shoes they wear. You can tell a lot more if you forensically examine their shoes. some kind of dried mud. I wonder why they need so much acetone. Place is a little too masculine for manicures. Shears are made for cutting pipes, and we have a severed gas line to account for. What makes you think there would be latent fluids there? What makes you think there would be latent fluids there? It's a pretty full print. Good clarity on the sample, too. It looks 
just like the tool we got from Reed. That could tell us who handled this tool. What's this? Trend Micro Internet Security Pro has detected a virus. Repair. Looks like someone's been practicing unsafe surfing. Okay, let's see what Pete has on this hard drive. Cat pictures, puzzle games, and Portia Weissman's monthly household budget. It wasn't Baja's fingerprint, but why would he have a ledger with Porsche's prints on it? He Baja's prints are on the toolbox in his office, which is not exactly a surprise, but it does suggest that the contents are his. Portia Weissman used this tool. It might be the one Brian Reed told us she was keeping at the spa. Look at how the imperfections on the blade match up to the markings on the gas line. These shears were used to cut that gas line. The tool from the barber shop could have been used to break into Porsche's apartment. Each side of the tool matches one of the distinct shapes ventilating the spa's drywall. Brian Reed's Denver tool is just as likely to have been used to help spread the fire as the tool we recovered from the barber shop. Portia kept her Denver tool at the spa, right where Pete Baja could have easily taken it. It's a match. It's a vegan blueberry muffin, just like it said on the package. Factor out the carbon, and the muffin that helped ignite the fire is identical to the ones we found in Baja's office. almost pure acetone. No fragrances, no dye. Very few impurities at all.
More volcanic minerals and acetone. Just where someone would hold a shoe when putting it on. Based on the placement of Baja's fingerprint, those have got to be his shoes. The shoes tie Pete Baja to the spot just prior to the explosion. I think we may have enough to nail Baja for starting the fire. His shoes put him in the spa sometime after the acetone was dumped. He picked up quantities of both the accelerant and the spa mud. The hair placed Baja in Porsche's apartment, but the footprint puts him there sometime after visiting the spa. Okay, I think I have a pretty clear picture of what happened. Baja was laundering money. And when Portia confronted him about it, he panicked. Then he decided to rig the spa to explode. Portia probably showed up after Pete was gone. Doc Robbins said she had marijuana in her system, so she might not have noticed the acetone. While she was there burning to death, Baja was at her apartment looking for the record she was keeping. With what we have now, an arrest warrant won't be a problem. Let's go talk to Brass. Good. is Pedro Baja. I'm an embezzler and a murderer. I set fire to the Superla Spa in order to cover up the fact that, for some time now, I have been fraudulently reporting its earnings. I poured acetone all over, cut the gas line, and left a muffin to burn in the toaster oven. I wasn't going to do the drywall, but that tool was there, and I was nervous. I swear to God, the place was empty when I rigged it to go up. I didn't know... How could I know that Portia would come by in the middle of the night? I even went to her apartment to talk her into giving me the record she told me about. When she wasn't there, I broke in. It was made crystal clear to me that I needed to get the records. But I never found them. I know it's small comfort, but I apologize to her family and to anyone close to her. 
I'm so sorry for taking her away. Sometimes a man is called upon to be more than he has been in the past. Sometimes he fails. Please, tell my sisters this. I made a deal with the devil to keep you safe, to give you a better life. I beg you to remember me if you are ever tempted to make a deal of your own. So it's come to this. Goodbye.